flat rides are an essential part of any amusement park, just as much as a roller coaster or dark ride. From relaxing rides to something more thrilling, they round out the park's collection of attractions offering more to do, experience and enjoy. While considered by many as filler, a unique or special version can be just as memorable as any bigger ride. Often much cheaper than a fully immersive dark ride or coaster, they take up less space but can still pack a punch. They are the final piece of the puzzle on a memorable day out at any theme park. The amount of different flat rides, travelling or permanent, is vast, and their history goes back a long way, evolving from the very first amusement-based steam-powered carousel. While some parks round out their offerings with great, unique or special flat rides, and some don't, one of the best collections on offer has to be at Canada's Wonderland in Toronto, home to the one-of-a-kind, strange, troubled, yet incredible-looking sledgehammer. Since 1969, German-based Huss Maschinenfabrik have become synonymous with unique or just strange flat rides. From the Enterprise, to the Top Spin, to the Topple Tower, if you have visited an amusement park or fair, you likely would have seen one of their attractions. In 1996, they would introduce another planned, innovative, thrilling and complex addition to their lineup, the Huss Jump. Three traveling versions of the brand new style of attraction would be introduced to the German fair market. The first, called Jumping, was introduced in April 1996. Another using the same name would debut at the Nuremberg Spring Festival the same month. A third named Freefall would also feature in Luxembourg. The new ride would attempt to create a freefall experience combined with spinning that could catapult riders into the air in a flash. Visually, it looked incredible. Using a hydraulic system, the gondolas were able to lift and drop multiple times during a cycle. With a top height of 69 feet, a high capacity of up to 1,400 riders per hour, if ran on a short cycle, the new experience added more flair to the fair. The ride was an engineering feat, carrying eight passengers on five free-rotating gondolas. The lift movement could be started rapidly or slowly. If run rapidly, the passengers could be catapulted upwards with an acceleration of around 3.5 Gs. When the hydraulic line to the tank is open, the descent could reach speeds of up to 6 meters per second. While the ride was incredible to watch operate as it flew up and down, the experience was somewhat of a mixed bag. The freefall aspects would be hard to feel against the spinning sensations of the gondolas. And the attraction was a maintenance nightmare. With one large oil hydraulic system in the center, it was hard to maintain, having many technical issues and was also an extremely heavy attraction to move around with it weighing around 90 tons. In total, only four were ever produced, with the fourth opening at a park in Taiwan. The three traveling versions were sold after a season or two to other showmen, with Freefall eventually ending up at Six Flags Great Adventure in the USA. Called Jumpin' Jack Flash, it was added to the park for the 1999 season as the first of its kind in North America. It continued to use the Great Fair lighting package and was an eye-catching attraction at the park. This lighting package remained the same, and even with its new name from the fair, it wasn't updated and still featured the name Freefall on it, which was confusing to some visitors, because there was another ride actually called Freefall at the other side of the park. He's about to attempt new Freefall at Great Adventure. It takes you up 13 stories above the earth and then drops you off without anything to cushion your fall. 
free fall only at Six Flags because everyone needs a great adventure. Its maintenance issues continued at its new home and often didn't operate. The prototype ride had many design issues since its opening and became troublesome to fix. After just four seasons, the ride was fully removed in 2004 and would sit in the park's boneyard area where it would remain. The ride model remained for sale by Huss, though it was seen as one of the weaker freefall traveling attractions when compared to the Shot and Drop, which would be introduced just two years after the jump. The Hearst Ride was an experimental attraction that would be seen as a flop sales-wise for the company. Today, no original Hearst jumps operate around the world. Hearst didn't give up on the idea, however. They would create a sequel attraction, the Hearst Jump 2. After a collection of failures and disappointing sales for their new rides, they hoped this would be their next big hit. Huss would work with Canada's Wonderland to create the first ever permanent jump too. While the original would be able to travel, this larger, more thrilling version would not. The Jump 2 would take the visual impact of the attraction to the next level, with something not really seen before in a park. The central tower, with a rotating section at the top, uses four 250 horsepower hydraulic engines to power the upward and downward movement on six arms, rotating at 7 RPM. Hydraulic pumps located underground near the attraction charge their accumulators in the tower itself. The arms feature six gondolas able to hold eight seats. These would counter-rotate to the main arms at 20 RPM. Unlike the original jump model, these claw-looking sections are connected to the main arms with a rotation joint, allowing them to swing in and out as passengers are lifted up to a maximum height of 59 feet. The top height of the actual attraction is 82 feet. It is able to produce smooth bouncing motions to more explosive jump up moments, offering unique sensations and providing an exciting ride every time you jumped into the sea. Advertised as the world's first giant jumping screen machine and called a menacing mechanical giant, it was aimed purely at thrill seekers. Opening on May 3rd, 2003 at Paramount Canada's Wonderland, Sledgehammer will begin its 1 minute 20 second cycle by lifting all six claws off the ground and starting to spin. Around 10 seconds into the ride, the claws shoot upwards while continuing to rotate, raising up and down throughout the cycle at different heights and ending with a final shoot down and instantly back up. The ride was incredibly popular instantly and a big hit for the park. It also looked incredibly amazing. It added another exciting attraction to Canada's Wonderland's great lineup while offering a fun yet not too intense ride experience. Some say this is an attraction that looks better than it is. The ride isn't that forceful, but that visual attraction and importance to an area cannot be understated. It does look incredible to see the giant machine twisting and flying up and down like some kind of monster. Even from its opening season, issues began to arise with Sledgehammer. It was regularly closed to try and fix its issues. This Jump 2 would be one of the last rides the original Huss machine and fabric would ever create. With the failure of their topple tower, the business would cease to exist as was. The original company would be acquired by a group of investors and a new company was created, Huss Park Attractions, that used many of the original designs and logo. No further Jump 2 models were sold to any parks and the original continued to have increasingly regular maintenance issues. It is not uncommon for the attraction to remain closed for months at a time when visiting Canada's Wonderland, with it often sitting there waiting for new parts for the ride to be repaired. Regularly, those visiting the park have no idea if the ride will be working on that day or not. Definitely one that you should head to early in the day if you want the best chance. 
It took me many attempts to finally get to the park on a day it was operated. In 2011, the ride cycle of the attraction was extended to around two minutes, with riders staying at the top height of the attraction for longer. If you're lucky enough to get on the attraction when it's working, at least you had an extra 40 seconds to enjoy it. To the park's credit, they have continued to maintain and operate the attraction as much as possible. The only one of its kind ever sold, it is definitely unique, and there are many parks that would have just removed the troublesome attraction, or even worse, left it sitting there to rot as part of a weird Q theme in for an even weirder IP based mirror maze. Escape the Black Mirror Labyrinth, or lose your mind trying, only at Fort Park Resort. Yeah, okay, it's alright, I guess. Other companies have introduced somewhat similar attractions to the Jump 2, including the Fabry Group Spider or the Zamperla Twist and Bounce, which are much smaller than the original attraction. Sledgehammer remains an iconic flat ride at Canada's Wonderland, and while it has been troubled, it is one of the most visually pleasing attractions at any theme park, and fingers crossed it has another good season in 2022. While the new Huss company continue to list the Jump 2 on their website, nearly 20 years after debuting, only one has ever existed, and for how much longer is unknown. For 19 years now, when working, it has brought something unique to Canada that while perhaps not the most forceful or thrilling, is 100% worth a ride. While amusement parks and theme parks use roller coasters and major dark rides as the big draws, and the spotlight remains firmly on them, I wouldn't underestimate the importance of a good flat ride. While many copies of each other exist throughout the world, some of the unique and special ones create just as long lasting memories, terror, and fun as many roller coasters. Be it Sledgehammer for its uniqueness, Slammer or Submission for its, uh, pain, a classic Enterprise, one of the many, many top spins, or even a drop tower with theming transforming the experience. In the right location, they can become something special and more than just your off the shelf experience that takes a theme park to another level. Theme parks need flat rides and Canada's Wonderland has perhaps one of the best lineups of them in the world. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Canada's Wonderland. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to join the expedition. What is your most memorable flat ride? Let me know in the comments. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram for upcoming episodes, and a special thank you to our Patreons for supporting the channel. We will see you next time.